All right, so another beautiful day out here in St. Louis. So I made my way downtown and I'm reviewing today the MiHoGo LX 4.0 electric bike. Now this bike has some style to it. I've been getting a lot of compliments about the way it looks. It comes in one single kind of colorway. So it's gonna be the main colors. It's going to be gray, but then also has some little accents around it that really make it you know, look very stylish. There's, there's some open parts to the magnesium alloy frame that I really do like. And this is a foldable e-bike too. So there's two latches you need to undo, one on the handlebar stem, and then you fold those down. And then also one is gonna be in the middle of the frame. And then now you're able to fold it up and make it pretty compact. Now there is a wheel at the bottom of this bike that is supposed to be good for wheeling the, the bike around when you do have it folded up. But I always suck at trying to use these. Maybe I'm just too tall, but I never really can get it to work. But no matter what, this bike is really easy to move around underneath the seat. I like the fact that you do have a uh, kind of a handle there that allows you to kind of pick up and move it around tight corners or just in your garage or something, which is very useful. And just, just in general, I like the uh, overall cable management up front. It's really nice up here. It's a nice and tight and clean bike. I really like the way it looks. Now this bike does come with a 750 watt motor that does peak out at a thousand watts. And you know what? Let me go ahead and do my speed test right now. So I'm going to be doing the first test just using the throttle only. So let's get this thing going in three, two, one, boom. All right, so I did lock out my suspension, so that should help me get the uh, maximum speed. And according to the website, we should be able to get up to 28 miles per hour. Now, I did talk to a rep from the company, and they said that this actually goes 32 miles per hour. And while it does say that on my display, using multiple GPS apps, I was clocking in around 28, 29 miles per hour. So right now on the bike's display, we're already at 28 miles per hour. On my GPS app, we're at 26, 27. The bike is now showing 30. My phone is showing 28. The bike is showing 31.5. My phone is still showing 28. And the bike, will we reach up to 32? Maybe, maybe. All right, we're at 31.8, so that's close enough to 32. But on my phone, it's showing 28. And I will say that it does feel like I'm going 28 miles per hour instead of 32. Um, and sometimes these e-bikes do overcompensate for the speed. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking that's what's going on here, but at least it does hit the advertised speed that they show on the website of 28. And now let me test the hydraulic disc brakes. Very nice. I love the brakes on this bike. So they're super quiet and they are very functional and they just feel very controlled when I am coming to a stop. And so let me get this thing turned around and now let me do the speed test using pedal assist. So let's get this thing going in three, two, one, boom all right so i do have it in the highest gear here and i weigh around 220 pounds i have it in pedal assist level five and i'm gonna give it some power here some oomph we're at 22 miles per hour on the uh, bike's display but now we're already at 26 27 gps just showing 25 26 and let me be quiet here and just really put some more power into this Whew. all right so it's, it's about the same that I, that I was getting with the throttle. The bike is showing around 31, sometimes getting close to 32, but the uh, my phone is showing 28. So with some power, you can get up to the same speeds of using uh, the throttle only, but definitely 28 miles per hour is a good speed for this bike. Now you do get two batteries with this bike. Both are removable and you just use the keys that comes with the bike. One of the batteries lives inside of the frame of the bike. So it's a little bit more of a hassle to take out because you have to fold up the bike and stuff to be able to pull it out. But the other one lives in the rear of the bike and it is exposed. So once you use a key to unlock it, you just pull it up. It has a handle at the top. So I find that one to be a little bit easier to take out, especially when I am trying to transport this bike to try to make it as lightweight as possible. And one minor thing is that the keyhole for the rear battery is actually reversed as far as the directions to unlock and lock it so instead of turning to the left to lock it i actually turned it to the left to unlock it very minor but just wanted to point it out and you can leave both batteries in the bike and still charge them and the company says this bike is intended for riders between 5.5 five and 6.4 so that's a decent amount of range for height and it can support up to 440 pounds so if you're a little bit on the heavier side like i am you should be fine with this bike and also if you do use uh you know the rear 
better rack for storage uh, that can handle a decent amount of weight overall for this bike. And so, yeah, so they did send over some of the accessories for this bike, like the front basket, and also even these really cool saddlebags that add a nice little touch of flair and design uh, to this bike. So none of these come standard with the bike. You can just buy them as uh, accessories on their website. But because the rear rack is already integrated into the frame, you don't have to use one of their baskets. If you have another one, or you just wanna use like some bungee cords to, to put on this bike, you can definitely just do that. Um, this bike also does come with uh, plastic fenders on the front and the rear. So it's gonna be covering the 20 by four inch fat tires on this bike, which have a really cool design with the brown sidewalls and decent amount of treading too. So I'm um, going off in grass and loose gravel. I felt very comfortable and, and in control um, with the tires, um, but those fenders do keep you protected from splashes of water and stuff. And now let me pull over here to read you the battery specs and talk about range because I didn't remember this stuff, but um, the first battery on the inside is gonna be 48 volts and it comes in at 12.8 amp hours. And the battery that's in the rear is coming in also at 48 volts and that reads at 16 amp hour so you get a total of 1382 watt hours now the company says as far as the total range you're looking between 80 and 100 miles now in my couple of weeks of testing uh, i just let it kind of run from the beginning of me unboxing this bike and i got around like i would probably say like 67 68 miles now again doing my testing i'm going up a lot of hills i'm really heavy on the throttle as well so i think if i did kind of rely on the the five levels of pedal assist that this bike has so when you are pedaling you're helping out the motor i, I probably would have been able to get up to around that 80 mile mark at least and it also does depend on your weight you know in different terrains as far as wind and stuff like that when it comes to the range that you should expect from this bike but overall i think you still even at like 60 miles or so that's a pretty good range and it takes about six hours to charge the inside battery and eight hours to charge the rear battery and there is just one single charger that comes in the box with this but you can always buy another charger if you want to charge both at the same time and this bike does have intelligent switching when it comes to the battery so you don't have to do anything as far as like turning on one battery when the other one runs out it'll automatically manage all of that so don't worry about it and I'm about to go on some bumpy terrain here so let me enable the uh, suspension here and see how this bike handles and so yeah this is a little bumpy here I'm gonna take <laughs> a little bit of the rough road here um, but you do have front suspension on this bike that is adjustable and then also you do have a uh, suspension seat post so no suspension built into like the frame of the bike but I love suspension seat posts they're really good you can always take it off and Woo. All right, that's a nice, <laughs> some nice bumps there. Uh, but you can always take off the seat post and you know put it on another bike. You don't have a lot of travel with the front suspension. Like it's not super uh, deep, but it is deep enough for me. Um, I'm not gonna be taking this bike really off road that much, but on terrain like this, if I am exploring and stuff, it, I think it feels just fine. And then also the seat too. The seat is super comfortable. The seat is wide for me. Um, no complaints at the seat at all. I'm very picky with my seats. And so I'm gonna do a little bit of a uh, hill test here. It kind of bends around the corner. It goes up a little ways, if you can see that right there. So this is gonna be pretty decent. So let's see how it does. And all right, so let me uh, just use the throttle only. Let's see how it does just using throttle going up this hill. The start isn't super fast. I think it's around like 85 newton meters of torque. Might be 81, but I think it's 85. But it's not doing too bad. You're not gonna race up this hill, but just using throttle only, we're slowing down here a little bit at the top, but we made it with no hard effort on my part because I just used throttle only, but yeah, not bad. And now I gotta go back and get my camera. <laughs> this is the part you really don't see in the reviews, the double backing. And oh, this bike just has a cadence sensor, so no torque sensor, but it feels really good. It's one of the best uh, cadence sensors that I've used on an electric bike. So the pedaling just feels very good. It does take like maybe like a half a second to a second to, to kick in when you start pedaling. Actually, it's more like a half a second um, when you start pedaling and for the motor to say, hey, all right, let me go ahead and start helping you out uh, when you are using pedal assist. But yeah, pedaling feels really good on this thing. And let's talk about some stuff on the handlebars here. So the handlebar grips are this nice little brown color, very good, no complaints there. They have a little bit of space there for the, uh, the meat at the palm of your hand. So it feels really good. You have a half twist throttle on the right hand side to be able to use 
And then also you do have a pretty standard Shimano shifter, no problems at all with shifting between the gears. And then on the left-hand side, you do have the controls that are very easy. You basically have three buttons to use the 3.5 inch color display on this bike, which is really nice. And I just noticed too, that I've been having this display on the brightness level one. It does go up to brightness level three. And that's nice because I usually wear my sunglasses and even in direct sunlight, I wasn't like complaining about not being able to see the screen. And I have still two extra brightness levels to go up to if I really want. Now to get into the menu of this bike, you just hit the power button and on the screen, you can see all the different settings that you can adjust for this bike. You can increase the speed level. Uh, you can de decrease it if you wanted to. So someone can get on here and kind of not go the maximum speed. And yeah, all of that stuff is just really in here. Very simple to use. And this bike also has Bluetooth. So you can download the app for your iPhone or Android and now you can connect to it. And you can see information as far as like your distance traveled and ride information and all these different things that does make this bike feel a little bit more smart. And one thing I do just want to make you aware of is that the kickstand is kind of close to the rear brake rotor right here. So when you do go to enable the kickstand, you might hit it with the toes of your feet. So just be a little bit careful because you don't really want to touch the uh, brake rotors at all to prevent them from starting to squeak and get dirty and stuff. So yeah, just be aware of that. And another useful feature that this bike does have is that the front headlight, which does have pretty decent coverage when you are riding at night, but it is kind of auto light sensing. So it can tell when it starts to get dark outside and automatically turn on the headlight like it did now when it started to get cloudy and start to, uh, started to rain like it is now. So yeah, pretty decent headlight and now let me stop getting rained on. And this comes with a brake light that is a decent size and also has a really good amount of brightness. So it's very easy to see during the day. And so, yeah, this is my first bike that I've reviewed from Mihogo. I haven't heard about this company until they contacted me and wanted to send this bike over for review, but I'm pretty impressed with it. Now the normal price, $18.99, I would like to say, I would like to see a little bit more power from the motor. Um, you're starting to see more bikes at that price range that are able to peak around like 13, 1400 watts or so. So peaking out at a thousand watts at $18.99, it's not bad, but I would like to see a little bit more, but because it is on sale for $13.99 at the time of this video, so I don't know what it's gonna be like two weeks from now, but at that price tag, this is plenty of power. 28 miles per hour is just fine, and the hill climbing that I did do, it was fine, especially just using the throttle only, but most of the time, I'm probably just gonna be using pedal assist, so that will be no problem for this bike too. Design is really good, it looks really stylish. And yeah, there's not a lot of complaints about this bike coming from me, so I think this will be an excellent first time e-bike buyer's bike for you. So anyway, I'll drop a link down below for this bike also give this video a like if you did like it and let me know what you think about this bike down in the comments below but like always i do want to thank you for watching this video and i will catch you later peace